from Egypt. And, and, and when, 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 when he got in and got the folk on their way out, guess what? And how should I respond? As a parent, as adults here at the Southside Baptist Church, we have the opportunity. As you can see, it depends on whose hands is in. So put your concerns, put your worries, put your...
things that he's done for you. Somebody ought to be able to shout hallelujah. Somebody that's not afraid ought to be able to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Page number 181 says, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. If you can, stand to your feet.
your way, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Very simple song. Lord, you are welcome.
each and every one, dear Lord, and their families, and everyone within the sound of my voice, dear Lord, just give them the blessings and the things that they need, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, after all is said and done, that you'll be lifted up and you'll be glorified for what you've done and what you're doing, dear Lord. Lord, we pray, Heavenly Father, right now for those that will be traveling this weekend or during this week or during this holiday season, Heavenly Father, that you give them traveling mercies, dear Lord. Take them to their destination safe and sound, dear Lord. Not only that, Heavenly Father, but give them the peace and the comfort of knowing, dear Lord, that you are with them and they will not forsake them, dear Lord, that you will be with them and their families, dear Lord, and it will be a joyous time, dear Lord, during this time, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray also, dear Lord, for those who are suffering, Lord, for whatever uh, things they're going through, dear Lord. Uh, we know that uh, you know what else happened, Heavenly Father, but you, you need to hear it from us, dear Lord. We need to talk to you about our needs, Heavenly Father. Lord, uh, we just thank you, dear Lord. Uh, we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory, dear Lord. We'd like to lift up our pastor, Heavenly Father, right now. Lord, uh, Give him, dear Lord, what he needs, Heavenly Father, him and his family, Heavenly Father. Bless them, guide them, and protect them, Heavenly Father. And for right now, this congregation, the decisions and the things that's coming up, dear Lord, uh, for, for our new leadership, Heavenly Father, we pray, dear Lord, that your divine guidance just, just touch each and every one of us, dear Lord. For we know you are in control, Heavenly Father. You've been in control, and you will always be in control. And we just thank you, dear Lord. We just pray for your blessings on everything and your guidance and what we do and say. Lord, again, we thank you for this time you've given us, Heavenly Father. And we just want to just lift up each and every one, dear Lord, right now, that you bless us, guide us, and protect us. And we pray right now for the word that will come to us. We pray that, dear Lord, that it will touch our hearts and give us uh, the desire to be obedient to the word, Heavenly Father. Lord, uh, we ask you that you just continue to, to open our hearts and our minds as we go from day to day, Heavenly Father, to your will. Because your will is what we need, Heavenly Father. Our Sunday school lesson, dear Lord, says, is hell real? Lord, we know that it is. And we know, dear Lord, that we need to follow you and we need, we can't do anything without you. That we need to be in your kingdom, Heavenly Father. To see you, dear Lord. To be in your glory, Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask for your guidance and continued blessings. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, we pray with thanksgiving. And the church say, Amen. 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 conservative congregation, okay, and a, a congregation that was uh, uh, probably more directed by culture mm -hmm. than it was by Bible, okay, okay? Yeah. when we had business meetings, uh, well, well, there were two, there were two things, when we had a communion service, right. nobody that was a member could stay in the church for communion service, wow. and, and to this day, I can't. <laughs> huh? Nobody not a member. Nobody not a member. Right. Yeah. Did I did I not say that right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. If you were not a member of the congregation, you could not even stay in the building for communion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. During communion. During communion. Uh, business meeting? Oh, absolutely not. 
I said that to say that right after this service, we're going to sit back down to have a family power. Okay. <laughs> Fireside chat. Fireside chat. <laughs> there are some important decisions to be made along the way, somewhere, either here or out there. Um, and I've said that to say that those of you who are visiting with us, there are some who are visiting on a regular basis, um, uh, please feel free to stay. You don't have to, because we, we, we don't... We don't have any secrets in here. Uh, and you might be helped <laughs> uh, to walk the aisle by being here. Amen? So, so, so feel free uh, to do that. There are a couple of other. I'm not going to insult, insult your intelligence by reading this stuff to you. But there are a couple of things I, I'd just like to highlight. The one is that this coming Wednesday evening, we will not be having any activities around here. Uh, um, in, in, in the sanctuary. No Bible study, no youth meeting, um, so that you can have a time to visit with your family. Uh, I know that some of you would be busy preparing the, you know, the, 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 the chitlins and the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> And, and I noticed that, that you have scheduled men's breakfast. Oh, this coming week. This is going to be a week of eating. Let me, say, let me tell you something. I'll be getting over the Thanksgiving thing. I don't know. Anyhow, I just, just to remind you, man, uh, it's important that you be here. And, and then the quarterly uh, church meeting on December the 6th. Um, during the pandemic and after that, we, you know, we have not gotten back to regular uh, regiment, regiments. So uh, uh, please make a note of that, all right? Now we come to worship the Lord by bringing his tithes and uh, your offerings into his storehouse. I, I really feel that it ought to be an act of worship as we come to say to our Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing me. Uh, and uh, uh, through your giving, uh, hopefully you'll bless somebody else. For those of you who are worshiping with us via YouTube and you like what you see, feel free to write a check. Send it to P.O. Box 680, Lumberton, New Jersey, or go to our website. It'll instruct you as to how you can do uh, giving uh, electronically. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people gathered in this place today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness over the years to you because you've been good to them. You've been more than faithful to all of us. Uh, Lord Jesus, as we present our offerings to you today, may it rise into your uh, presence as sweet-smelling savor. We ask that you bless every need according to your riches and glory, not only in here, Lord, uh, but in the space out there that folks are worshiping with us. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
page number 236. Mm. I want you to notice the sequence in which it rises. It says, bless that wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Sing that wonderful name. Yeah. Preach that wonderful name. Then you praise that wonderful name. And go share that wonderful yeah. name. I like that. Let, let's sing it like we feel it this morning, would you?
Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I want to begin to read at verse 11 and read through verse 18. Luke 17, beginning at verse 11. When you find it, it's going to read something like this. <clears throat> and it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten leopards, ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Yeah. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down at his feet and at his face and at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? Uh, but where are the nine? Uh, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to give you something to think about today. And that is standing out in the crowd. Uh -huh. yeah. Standing out in the crowd. Mm. Uh, do, do you know those people? <laughs> uh, who, who, who can just uh, make an impression uh, when they show up? Uh, all of the attention turned to them. <clears throat> Whatever they do in a crowd, they are more visible yeah. than other folks. Uh, let me tell you, uh, you can stand out in the crowd for good, uh, or you can stand out in the crowd for ugly and evil. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, as we approach Thanksgiving, uh, we take a whole lot of stuff for granted, do we? Uh, we think that Thanksgiving is focused around the turkey and the dressing and the beans and the, all of the other stuff we cook and prepare, the family gathering, uh, sometimes for good or for bad. And no telling what will happen around the family table on Thanksgiving. But praise the Lord anyhow. All right? The healing, uh, this passage here, of the ten lepers is unique uh, to Luke. Mm -hmm. Now it's very interesting uh, for those of you who have um, uh, uh, Bibles that have um, headings in sections. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, uh, in some section, it, it'll give you a, a subject and then it said you can find this also in and then it'll go to some of the other Gospels. You won't find that here. Because this is very unique uh, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, Luke. Um, it's very interesting. The scripture says that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, that's the city uh, in, 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 in which he died. Um, and, and he passed through the midst of uh, Samaria and Galilee. So he had to go through uh, uh, both uh, enemy territory uh, and uh, friendly territory. Now, we're not so sure about uh, Jerusalem being friendly at this point. Because, you know, they were trying to figure out every way uh, to get him. Uh, and uh, uh, up, up to this point, uh, could not. 
Um, it says, uh, as he entered into a village, we are not told which village. It says there met him uh, ten men that were leopards which stood afar off. Now, it's, it's, it's very interesting um, that the account begins with the healing of ten leopards. Um, <clears throat> please notice that the healing was done afar off. Yeah. And I find this very interesting, yeah. Reverend. Uh -huh. Jesus didn't have to touch them. Right. He didn't have to speak to them. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't have to get near them. He didn't have to, he, I, I, I mean, he did not even have to say to them, be healed. Right. Uh, you notice what he did, did you? Uh, he, he said to them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And if you don't mind writing in your Bible, you can underline that word priests. Yeah. It's in the plural. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, uh, just so you know that uh, I know uh, and, and you ought to know uh, that leprosy was a disease for which they did not have a cure. Uh, as a result, here is what happens. Uh, lepers were were out by themselves. Uh, they, they, they had to be <laughs> they, 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 they had to be outside of the city. In fact, uh, uh, if if, uh, if you want to take some 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 uh, scriptures to check them uh, later on, uh, Leviticus thirteen uh, verses thirty eight through forty six. Uh, uh, that that's a rather uh, lengthy uh, passage of scripture that uh, God gave Moses instruction uh, <laughs> that the, that they were to excommunicate uh, all unclean folk from. Uh, the, the colony uh, of people, uh, including lepers. And according to, uh, let me go back and read those couple of verses for you. According to uh, Numbers chapter 5, Numbers chapter 5, 1 through 4, here's what it says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper, and every one that had an issue, and whosoever who, whosoever is defiled by the dead. Now that's very interesting, because you know uh, the Jews were not supposed to come in contact with the dead, <laughs> and if they do, they were they were to be considered unclean for a period of time until they were cleaned by the priests. Anyhow, he said both male and female. Ah, <laughs> I got to do this. God was an equal opportunity excommunicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. He says, shall be put out uh, without the camp. You shall put them out. Uh, 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 that they defile not their camp in the midst whereof I dwell. Said so the children of Israel did so and put them out as Moses spoke uh, for the Lord. So that's, that, that's with regard to, to uh, now I found uh, something very interesting that today leprosy is defined as Hansen's disease. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus said, uh, please notice how they address Jesus. They called him by name. They said, Jesus. And then they turned around and said, Master, <laughs> have mercy upon us. Um, it, 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 it's very interesting because uh, uh, elsewhere in Scripture, uh, only his disciples referred to him as master. <laughs> Other folk refer to him as teacher. But, 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 but these folks said master. And, and then they turn around and say, have mercy on us. Uh, now, it's very interesting that these folks were excommunicated so they could not create a livelihood. 
within, within the community. And, and their survival was dependent upon the, 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 the generosity of other folks. Uh, we know it in scripture as arms, giving arms. Uh, it is suggested that this, this plea, have mercy upon us, um, it is more than, than could, you, could, you give us, could you give us a dollar, please? Uh, it, 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 it has built in it uh, much more uh, than that. Uh, it, it's not just, uh, uh, it means have pity on us. Um, uh, the kind of mercy that they sought is not specifically mentioned, but it was more than arms. Uh, they, stopped, they sought, for example, healing from Jesus. Isn't it interesting uh, as Jesus walked the earth, did the people hear about him and, 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 and identify that that's the one who can do something for me? Or did they just have a, 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 a inner gut feeling that this is the person uh, who can do uh, something uh, for me? Um, in, 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 uh, as I suggested, um, in, in verse 14, Jesus said to them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. Now, <coughs> we come back, when we come back to the practical application, we're going to refer to this again. But, please uh, jump down. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it says that the one who came back to give uh, to verse 16, it says, and he was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. I, I could go in a, a whole other direction. Isn't it interesting how folk who find themselves in a precarious position can get along together for survival? <laughs> when the folk over here who are blessed <laughs> Just spend all of their time fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the far right mm -hmm. and the far left mm -hmm. and the rich mm -hmm. and the poor. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory. Mm -hmm. Now, it's assumed here that Jesus knew that there were at least one Samaritan in there. We, we, we really don't know how many. Right. And, and this is why he said, go show yourself to the priests. Mm -hmm. Plural. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, and, and we don't know, so we're just trying to figure it out, that, that, that he probably assumed that the Samaritans would go show themselves to the Samaritan priest mm -hmm. when the Jews would go show themselves to the Jewish prince. Mm -hmm. But we don't know, do we? Ah, uh, it says, um, one of them that uh, glorified, uh, one of them, uh, when he saw that he was healed, and, and now this is very interesting. They were not healed when they got to the priest. Right. <laughs> Usually the priest declares them clean. Uh, and, and the priest was, was, you know, priest, doctor, kind of a thing but on their way to see the priest they looked down and they said it's not there anymore it's gone guess what I'm whole and this Samaritan he got so excited he just turned around and said let me go back and find Jesus because I got to do something about this. Yeah. And, and, and the scripture says that he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet. And with a loud voice, he just began to praise God mm -hmm. and, 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 and thank Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jesus said, now, can you figure this out? Mm -hmm. There were 10 of you. Mm -hmm. Where the other night? Standing out in a crowd. 
This one stood up. Yeah. Let, 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 me, let me tell you how he stood up. Uh, um, and, and, and as we enter into this Thanksgiving time, <clears throat> the question is, you, 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 you know what Thanksgiving is? It's, it's gratitude. Yeah. It's rather than gratitude. So you are either grateful or you are ungrateful. Yeah. Let, let me say that again. You are either grateful or you are ungrateful. Now, don't go home and say the preacher said that I am ungrateful. <laughs> but you will have to decide that for yourself. When, 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 when we look at some things here, uh, 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 ungratefulness expresses itself, I think, in two ways. One is complaining. You know anybody who likes to complain? <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Reverend, Jerry, Re Reverend Jerry said, he said, you are here this morning yeah. by the grace of God. Yeah. Uh, you are who you are this morning yeah. by the mercy of God. Yeah. Uh, God didn't have to bless you the way that he blessed you. God didn't have to give you what he gave you. Yeah. But watch this now. He gave you transportation. Yeah, and you said, you. I needed a Lamborghini, Lord. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he gave you a place to lay your head. And you say, Lord, you know what I need is, a, is, is one of them comfort beds. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gave you a job. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And you said, Lord, you know what I needed. I, I needed a six-figure job. Mm -hmm. Or an eight-figure job. I, there are some folk who are never satisfied with what God has given to them. And what you ought to know, that it, it, it is not the corporation that you work for. It is not the man or the woman that you marry. It, it, it is not the, 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 the business. So, it is God's mercy that gives to you and to me what we have. Are you with me? I might go a step further. By saying, Lord, I pray that you would fix this man or this woman that you gave me. And somehow the other God didn't see fit to fix it right then. Yeah. He, he, he just created a little more issue in your life. <laughs> and instead of saying, Lord, thank you for this issue that you're putting in my life because I know you want to make me into something better, and you begin to complain about God didn't give you what you asked for. So ungratefulness expresses itself in complaining. And I, I, I challenge you this morning. If you're not happy where you are, and you've been complaining about all of the things that ain't right where you are, or you think they're are not right. Mm. Just begin to thank God mm. for those things. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to thank and praise Him, mm. the ugly things will become beautiful. Yeah. 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 Are you with me? Yeah. All right. I don't have much time, so I better hurry on here. The other way that ungratefulness expresses itself is in silence. <laughs> silence. <laughs> I, I, I want you to notice what the Samaritan did. 
He turned around. He didn't even, he, 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 he didn't even go to church. <laughs> go show himself to the priest. He just, he just, he just found out that he was healed. Uh, and it's very interesting. It's very interesting uh, the, the, way, uh, the way that the scripture put it. Uh, they asked for cleansing. Uh, no, they asked uh, for mercy. Look at verse uh, 14 at the bottom. They, uh, and it came to pass that as they went, they were on their way, they were cleansed. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now look at verse 15. He said, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed. Yeah. All right. Now, there, there's a whole lot of debate. And, and, and you know, us theologians like to, like, 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 like to go out on the limb on that. And, and what they were saying is uh, that what Luke is trying to do here is to say that uh, the, the Samaritan, you know that they were, uh, they were a mixed breed, kind of a, a, on the periphery, outside, enemies to the Jews. Uh, but what Luke is trying to say here is that God's grace uh, to be sufficient for salvation for everyone uh, was experienced. And all of a sudden, uh, the Samaritan found out that he can be saved too. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he got all excited and turned around and wanted to go back uh, to thank uh, Jesus. And, and uh, uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But let's talk about the ten. Yeah. Uh, the ten just took things for granted. Just mm -hmm. Went their way silently to the priest and said... Jesus told me to come see you, so I am here, and would you kindly, by all of the discretions that you have, declare me clean so that I can be reunited with my family? And when the priest did what he did, they just went back to, quote, routine silence. What's God doing for you? How is it affecting you? The prophet Jeremiah puts it this way. He said the word of God became like fire in my bones. And I got to say something. Because if I don't, I will be consumed spiritually if I keep my mouth shut. I don't want to get involved. Don't want to be a part of Don't Don't rope me into this. My mouth is, mm. I ain't going to do nothing. You're ungrateful. The people of God ought to say something about the goodness of God. Amen? All right. Now, let's go back to the second thing. <clears throat> Gratitude is grounded in worship. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving <laughs> is grounded in worship. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this Samaritan did four things. Let's talk about them very quickly. Did four things. Four things. Number one, he turned around mm -hmm. and, and he came to Jesus. But before he even got to Jesus, I believe, he was praising God. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was praising God all his way back to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, now watch this. <clears throat> what you need to understand, let me repeat it, I, and I may sound repetitious. Mm -hmm. What you need to understand that every Good and perfect blessing comes from God above. Amen. Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get it all turned around. Mm -hmm. When somebody does something kind to me, <laughs> I, 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 I begin to worship that person. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. But it could never have been placed in the heart of that person 
to be kind to me if God did not put it there. Are you with me? So, 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 the promotion that you got on the job. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. You may say, well, we're just doing business. Yeah, we're doing business. But if God did not permit it and allow it and, and, and pour it on, you would not get the promotion you got or the raise you got or the car you got or the house you got or whatever you got. It all comes back to God. So what we need to understand that our primary responsibility as believers is to do what? Is to worship God. Yeah. This is what, this is what the, the Samaritan did. He, 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 he said in verse 15, he turned back with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Everybody knew that he was blessed. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to call you crazy this week because you are so loud and excited about what God is doing in your life that they're wondering what's going on. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. I'm going to say this. I'm on my way out, but I'm going to say it. Listen, listen, listen. We are so sophisticated in our worship most of the time that we wonder whether God is in this thing. Listen, we go to a ball game and, 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 and come back home hoarse because of all of the hallelujah and noise that we made. But listen, we come to church and we sit down. Talk to me, preacher. How are you doing? Talk to me, preacher. We are so quiet and sophisticated. Once in a while, the people of God need to get boisterous about what God is doing in our lives. Somebody ought to shout once in a while. Somebody ought to cry once in a while. Somebody ought to get down on their knees once in a while and begin to praise God for who he is and for what he is doing. So when you get to your Thanksgiving table, when you get to your Thanksgiving table, just don't sit down and say, thank you, Lord, for the food and the turkey and the dressing and the everything. Somebody shout and say, hallelujah, had it not been for the grace and mercy of God, we would not have this plenty before. Are you with me? So it begins, it begins with a praise and worship to God. Uh, please notice that he did it loudly. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, yeah. mm. some of us are a little bit embarrassed <laughs> about what God is doing for us. Uh, but but uh, we are bold and brazen about everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the people of God need to get bold and brazen yeah. about what God yes, is, is doing. He threw himself down. Listen. You know what that means? Oh, and I, I, and, and I wish I had somebody to help me here this morning. <laughs> now what he did, he, he came to Jesus. And he literally fell prostrate mm -hmm. on his face. Yeah. You know what that says? Mm -hmm. He says, you are God. Yeah. And I am your creator. Yeah. The creation. Yeah. Okay? He, I, 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 uh, and sometimes, listen, sometimes we act like we are gods. Mm. Yeah, yeah, true. He pulled himself up by his own bootstraps. Mm. Mm. All watch. Because <laughs> <laughs> if God didn't give you the bootstrap, <laughs> you couldn't pull nothing. <laughs> Are you with me? <clears throat> then he did a fourth thing. <clears throat> the scripture says, <clears throat> in verse six, 16, he said, he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus giving him thanks. Mm -hmm. Now that him is Jesus. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How, how, how grateful is you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> 
guilty. Because sometimes I don't say thank you yeah. often enough. Yeah. When God uses somebody to bless your life, you ought to turn around and say thank you. Yeah. Don't worship that individual yeah. or that conduit. Mm -hmm. Don't worship that conduit. But bless that kind of. Ah, uh, are you with me? Yeah. Uh, see, 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 see. Well, you're supposed to be kind. You're a Christian. Mm -hmm. God didn't have to put it in your heart mm -hmm. to be kind to men. That's right. So when I finish worshiping God, mm -hmm. I come to the source that God used. Mm -hmm. And say thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting God use you mm -hmm. uh, to bless me. And, 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 and by the way, somebody out there might be listening to me today. I learned an interesting lesson some years ago. You know, as a pastor, I, uh, you know, folks are always uh, wanting to be kind to you. Mm -hmm. I give you something, and I'm saying, no, you, you don't have to do that. Do that to me. Uh, I, I consider my responsibility as the shepherd of this flock. flock uh, if you came and uh, say, Pastor, <clears throat> uh, would uh, we're going to get married? Would you would you marry me? I said, you know, of course. Um, I'd be delighted. The, the privilege is mine. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, what do you charge? Okay, that's that. That's part of my ministry to you. Mm -hmm. You have death in the family. Mm -hmm. um, you call upon me uh, to do the service. What do you charge? Mm -hmm. That ought to be part of my ministry yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you feel, you know, if the Lord puts it upon your heart to, to give a love offering, that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I used to have really had difficulty with that, Reverend. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Until Brother Bob Talley helped me. He said, if somebody wants to bless you, take it. Yes, sir. Because if you don't, here's what you do. You rob them yes, of their blessing. Yes, Are you with me? Yes, so, so, so don't be ungrateful. Don't take things for granted. You, 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 you know, just worship God. Worship God. Just thank him. Yes. And then turn around and just come to the source and say, I thank God for you. Yes. Yes. That you are willing to be used of God yes. to be a blessing to me. Yes. When that becomes a reality, this whole world will be turned around. Yes. And when you begin to worship God like you ought to. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody has said, they're crazy. But guess what? I want some of what they got. <laughs> And when they get a dose of the Holy Spirit in their lives, yeah. that's what we need in this world today. Would you bow your head? Close your eyes and open your heart word, to Jesus this morning. <laughs> What's he saying to you? I hope as you gather with your family this week that it'll be more than turkey and turkey dressing and, and, and whatever else you put on the table. But it'll be, it'll be your, your opportunity to let folk know that God has blessed you. And you are not ashamed to shout it from the hilltop that God is the source of your blessing. Gratitude. Worship him. Worship him. <laughs> Thank the source of your blessing. Now the greatest thing that you can be thankful for is for your insurance to heaven. I tell folk I have heaven's insurance. It's called the blood of Jesus Christ. One day when I got on my knees off of a horse on North End, Point Island, Nicaragua, got on my knees and prayed to the Lord, asking him to be my savior. Listen, I'm on my way to heaven. Those of you who are worshiping via YouTube, 
you may not have experienced the grace of God in salvation. This is your opportunity today. In a moment, we're going to give the invitation. I don't know all of your spiritual journey. I know most of it. But maybe somebody here this morning, I need to just rededicate themselves to worship. Somebody might just need to give their lives for the first time in a committed way to Jesus Christ. Father God, lead us in this time of invitation. May your perfect will be done in our lives individually and collectively. Save somebody who need to be saved today. Draw somebody back to you who need to be drawn. Comfort somebody who need to be comforted. Encourage someone who needs to be encouraged. Lead us in this time of invitation, we pray. In Jesus' name. Quietly stand to your hand and feet. Turn in your hymn book, I think, at page numbers 275. We're going to sing the first and the last stanza. If you feel in your spirit that you ought to step out from where you are, you are this morning, come forward to make a renewed commitment. Come on. For those of you who are worshiping with us via the YouTube, call me. I'll be listening for your call. I'll try to help you in whatever way I can. If I can't, I'll find somebody who can to the glory of God. Page number 275, I surrender all. Oh, 